You're listening to the Breezy Moms Podcast on Digital Stream Radio. Hey guys, tonight our guest is an awesome businesswoman, wife, and mom who wears many hats as most of us do. She joins us to talk about having the courage to step off of a path that isn't working to get onto a new path, new path that she's been thriving on ever since. So stick around. Hey everyone, you're listening to the Breezy Moms Podcast, a weekly show that chronicles the adventures of motherhood. I'm Candace. Now let's start the show. Hey guys. Hey, hey, hey. Oh. Welcome. Hi, how are you? Oh, we're back. I'm we fabulous. Are. How are you? I'm good. I'm feeling good. I'm drinking wine out of a mason jar. I mean, it's, how much better does it get? Yeah, I know. And I'm, I'm having a truly and we just, you know, shots and all mm. that good stuff. Mm-hmm. So what is this thing called? It's Patron Cafe. Oh, that seems fancy. It's delicious, it isn't is, it? It's delicious. It is um, warm and cozy and like loving. I don't know. There's a, like, a lot happened when I had that. I'd never had it before, but it felt, and it was lasting. Like, I think I just got over that shot from I'll just give it a couple minutes of minutes. Ago. Your mouth is about to get extra juicy. It already is. <laughs> so welcome everyone to another episode of the Breezy Moms podcast. It is Thursday. As always, we do record and uh, we're going to have a good time. We have a guest tonight. Yes, we do. I'm so excited to have Koi on later. Uh, she's going to be talking about, I've, I've actually been really into it. And I think that over the last several months, I've, I've had a lot of people on and I've just realized that I've, I'm around a lot of people who are entrepreneurs and have opened new businesses and are doing just like cool things that are off, off of the like assumed path, right? Like yeah. people have left their jobs or some people are still, are still running their, their nine to five, but, but still, um, I should say grinding on their their idea, their business, their like whatever it was that was sort of driving. And I, I just read a thing that said like some people are doing their nine to five to fund their five to nine. And I was like, yes, that is <laughs> that's exactly what people are doing. I, I do that. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> we all do it. Yeah. And I just, I mean, like one of my clients just opened his own practice. He's a lawyer. One of my clients is quitting his job to be, to start his own consulting um, business, doing college counseling like Koi opened a gym, like people around me. And it, it's weird because people have, I guess, have been doing this for a while, but because I wasn't, I wasn't in this mindset. I wasn't, I wasn't in this world. I didn't even notice. Oh, I can't wait to talk to her. Yeah. Though. I'm so you know, super excited. Maybe she can give me some pointers because this fat boy has got to do something. I thought you were talking about you know? business, but yes, I'm sure she has. I, some I'm, I'm sitting here, you know, just <laughs> cultivating something <laughs> It's springtime and it just keeps growing. It keeps growing. Yeah, it's hard. It's hard. Me too. I was all like feeling myself maybe last week Mm -hmm. because the scale was going down, but I was sick. And now I feel a little bit better. And the two pounds came back real fast. I was like, see, Candace, you you can't you can't get too excited too fast because it wasn't real. Well, I did lose I did lose six pounds. Oh, wow. And that's because I'm not drinking sugary drinks. I'm not drinking soda. Like with breakfast, I'll drink water with lunch. I'll drink water. So I stopped drinking like um, ginger ale and all that stuff. And so now I'm just focusing on drinking water. That's so. amazing. Although I'm just going to say it out loud, like fucking men, you decide you're going to stop drinking soda and you lose 10 pounds. Like I, I, I could stop eating for a week and I still wouldn't lose it's, any weight. It's like, like it's just it's like terrible. The, it's like the Richard Simmons <laughs> shit. It's, you know, the type of dump where you go to the bathroom and it, <laughs> immediately you lose 15 pounds because it's that, you know, it's that intense. Yeah. It's, no, only men do like that. that. No. But then, you know, I had I had two carbonated drinks. I had two Trulies today. So that's at least three ounces back on. And a shot. <laughs> I don't like her. And uh, But no, it's fun. Yeah, no, I call it save the baby syndrome that women go through. Even if there's no baby, your body's like, well, there might be a baby. You just got to keep the package. I just got to keep the keep the, the fluff here just to make sure we don't want the baby to hurt. What if you fall down? You can't like, it's like, I don't need this extra muffin here on the side. Like the baby that isn't even here. Here, doesn't need that shit like let it go but your speaking, body is just like no lord have baby. mercy speaking of babies yes i have a question for i'm listening you. how are your boys oh lord have mercy the boys are great mm, you there's hear a that reason, there's hear a that? reason like, why she took a shot today there's a like, reason let's let's so here's here's the real of it a couple of let's, things here's the real of it i love my boys i know all of them 
Lincoln, Emery, and James. I love them. But dear Lord, I was driving here tonight after like finally getting out of the house. <laughs> and when I tell you, like I almost shed a tear, like <clears throat> I, <laughs> there was a moment where I was just like, I'm fucking tired. Like I'm so tired. And then I, and then I felt guilty because I don't, I don't wake up early. I go to sleep late, but like I, I'm not. It's not like I'm only getting three or four hours of sleep. I'm just mentally exhausted, like physically exhausted, too. But like mentally, I don't have anything. And I don't know if I've talked about this before on this show, but I have had these like I I was I was thinking for a while that maybe I was crazy. And now I realize that I'm not, I think. Right. But every once in a while in the past, not today, I have thought like, what if I just get into a little car accident? Like, or like, what if I just like kind of fall down the stairs? Like, I just feel like I need to get hurt enough to have to lay down for a couple days. Take a break. And yeah, but so like, that's the thing. It's so I, I was reading about it and it's like sometimes women, moms, you, you, you just never get like every, somebody's always asking you something. Someone's always looking for something for you. Like, well, what should we do? What do you want to eat? Where should we go? What did the boys do? What about, and it's just like a mental overload, sh- overload and a stress and a weight that we never really get to turn off. And legit, the only, the only way that my brain thinks that I could get a moment's peace from that is if I were in a hospital bed. Right. Lord so it's us. like literally it's like your brain is just like, I, I just need to shut down for one minute. Like, what if I broke my ankle? Like, I'm not I don't want my leg to get cut off. I don't want I don't want to die. I can go find Arya Stark. She'll take care of that shit quickly. <laughs> I know. And I'm laughing and I'm like crying inside. But like, I feel <laughs> I feel like it's this this thing. It's just you 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 just need a, a minute to like. Cause it's not, it's, it's different from self care. You know, you go and get your nails done or whatever. Like that's, that doesn't fix, that doesn't fix this constant kind of like, um, like an overload of touching, you know, like babies, kids, they're always touching you. Sometimes moms get overload on just like the sensory of it and the, the sensory, the, the physical touching the mom, look at this mom, look at this mom, look at this mom, 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 mom. Like that is makes you crazy like it just literally makes you crazy but i think you you don't get to turn it off you have so much um but you also have a lot of things that are that are thrown at you in every direction right because you know you have your business but your business is in your home right so it's not like you can't leave you can't leave like close shop and go home mm-hmm, right mm-hmm. and then you have your kids mm-hmm. and then your husband is in school and this is his final week mm-hmm. he's graduating he's next graduating. week so i mean all of that stress culminates and it just adds and it just builds. Right. But I and think, so then sometimes you cry in your car. I mean, and, I'm just. And you have to. <laughs> and you just have to. And you just. It's like sometimes when I feel like this, I, I stopped watching Grey's Anatomy probably five years ago. But sometimes I have such an emotional like backup buildup that I go and watch an episode of Grey's Anatomy. Because whatever out. is happening on any given week is just like a cleansing. Like you are definitely going to cry. It's going to be an ugly cry. There's going to be snot involved. <laughs> but it's going to be a deep-seated mm-hmm. cleanse, right? And even though it wasn't about you, your body doesn't know that that cry wasn't about like oh you but you find a way to make it about you (laughs) no but what i'm saying is like your body just feels the release and the relief it doesn't know that it came from the show right and it's just like i had all of this tension built up inside of me and it just came out so okay now you can have a couple days of (laughs) maybe a couple hours of sanity you know what i mean so it's just Mm a it's a strange it's a really strange thing and i i really thought that i was crazy like i thought it's 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 part of the reason why I went to therapy a couple of years ago when I had Emery like I thought I was going crazy because I was I, I felt like I wanted to get into a car accident and I was like how can you want to get into a car accident and I I knew I didn't want to die right like I don't want to die I just want for like nobody to talk to me at all not a Has single it ever sound. occurred to you that when you're home in bed with a cast on they're still gonna talk to you right <laughs> 
<laughs> like seriously? No, that's when you talk to the nurse and you make the nurse tell everybody that like what she real like the medical <laughs> the medical diagnosis is that she Silence. can't hear any sound. She can't say a single word. You like get a nurse on board with you to block everybody out. That actually happened when I had And um, how do you explain that to the kids? Well, I mean the doctor said that I that mom can't talk. They don't know that? They gonna I look know, at you and be like, "Mommy, what's so wrong with you? Get up! I why, want pancakes." That's why it's not real, right? That's why it's not real, and it's like a weird psychosis thing, a weird like anxiety, psychosis, whatever that's in your head, and you just have to walk around with it, and you're just like, "I, I, I <laughs> like literally, I, um, I find strength in knowing that I literally, seriously, don't want to die." Right. I don't want to die. I don't want my kids to go anywhere. I don't want to lose anybody. I don't want to really want I don't really want to run away from them. All those are important. All of those things are important. And and the the place where you have a problem is where you can't you can't identify that. You know what I mean? And you can't find, you know, the one thing to hold on to or the whatever. And so that's when you I mean, in both cases, like I probably need therapy now. But uh, in those cases where you really can't find the the joy or the the thing to sort of reel you back in when you're you're feeling dark and down that's when you really need maybe you even need some medicine at that point you know what i mean probably well the good thing is there's a light at the end of your tunnel right you've got you've got two good things going for you you can come here it's thursday you can just open up and let it go right yes that's exactly this is like your therapy Talk that, about it. That is exactly what got me through the drive coming here tonight. I was like, the the awesome thing is that I I was reminded because I really was I was like I was like falling deep into whatever was happening in my office before I was coming here. I called Koi before I got here, which helped me, you know, because you you kind of have to pretend for other people for which I should learn to pretend for my family, but. I don't always have it in me to pretend for my family. But if I have to talk to someone else, you have to like perk up and smile and, oh, I'm so excited for the show tonight and it's going to be great. And you make jokes and blah, blah, blah. And just the act of doing that sends some signals to your brain that yeah. that gets you. Usually when I'm coming here, I play like 90s music. I play music in the car and then it like gets the the whatever um, feel goods going in your body. And again, your brain doesn't care where it comes from. It just matters it just that the it. it just matters that the the magic happens. So, um, so I knew that I was I was falling, but the fact that we have the fact that I love coming here and I love doing the show and I'm so grateful to be able to do this. That even though I was in a shitty mood, I was like, oh, but I'm going to go do the show. I know it's going to be great because I'm going <coughs> to go do the show, and I know that James is going to do whatever needs to be done and whatever it takes to make sure that I can come to the show. That's right. right. It's like a thing that we've both agreed on that I really want to and need to do every week. And it n- it never gets broken from my side because we're both really committed to it. So I found some strength in that and knowing that it's not like he'll just be like, oh, I can't come. So you can't go to the show. You know yeah. what I mean? So I just had to hold on for like 20 more minutes and then it was going to be good. Now, all of that was to say, the boys are good. I'm a wreck. The boys are good. Lincoln is five. I keep saying that. He turned five. And I was waiting. People kept telling me, wait till five. Five is like a turning point. It's going to be so great. And it has been great. I can tell him it's time for bed. He goes upstairs. He runs the bath. He'll help Lincoln, um, the other one, Emery, get undressed. Like, I get upstairs and they're already in the bath. Or he gets puts on pajamas or he makes pancakes for them. You know what I mean? Like he's he's uh, gotten some independence and I've showed him how to do some things and he's ginormous so he can reach everything. It's fantastic. What I wasn't prepared for was now anytime I say something, he goes, yeah, but but why, but why can't we just? And I was like, listen, that's not how any of this works. Like I said, no, no, you can't. <laughs> like you just can't. Absolutely not. And I was telling Koi earlier that he is so super social and he's actually really likable and everybody likes him. And so he always wants to he wants to say good morning to our neighbor across the street like at eight o'clock in the morning when I can see that she just rolled out of bed and is trying her best to get to work. He's like, hi, Miss Tina. Like from across, he opens our front door and he's screaming her name. And I'm just like, I know she wasn't ready for that. I know she wasn't ready for that. I was like, I haven't even had a cup of coffee, child. Nothing. Go back like, in that house. Her hair is still wet. You know, just like. So I had to tell him tonight, hey, 
kids cannot talk to grownups like that. We mm-hmm. just don't yell at grownups from across the street. First of all, they're grown and they have their own things going on. Like you have got to, if they ca- if they make eye contact with you, then you say hi. But if you find yourself screaming over and over again to get someone's attention, like it's just not the thing. It's and not, she's probably like in zombie land. She's in zombie land. And like the last thing I want is like, why won't Candace keep her kids in the house? Like, right? Like <laughs> that's what I would feel like if every single morning. Free range so- parenting. No. You know, yes, we, but, we've, we've covered that on the show. Yes, so, but you your know. free range shouldn't in like encroach on my free range. Like, <laughs> just but that's your free range, free range can't come over here. Like, stay on your side of the street. So, um, so anyway, that's p- part of what I was. And then he was trying to say hi to our other neighbor, and he's like friends with adults. You know, he wants to be friends with adults. He's trying to catch our neighbor's attention, who's who's mowing the lawn with the big headphones on. So. I I come outside and he's screaming, so I mess her. Hi, hi. It's like, first of all, you're going to like catch him off guard, and he's got a sharp tool in his hand. Like, give him a second. He's gonna you know? mow you over. He's got a. Yeah. Um, it sounded like he was cutting the hedges with like a electric saw or something. Gotcha. I don't know what he was doing, but he was deep in it, and he didn't need to be in- interrupted by a five year old. Yeah. So I'm just trying to teach him <clears throat> a little bit of like relaxing and boundaries and yes it's nice to be social and everybody loves you but like we have so much going on in our house right now please be happy to be with your brother and me even though i don't want to talk to you right now like (laughs) please be happy to be with us don't ask me any questions yeah don't ask me any questions but be happy to be next to me on the other side of the room like (laughs) be next to me but don't touch me like it's hard i know it's hard for all of us so um, so yeah, he's great. And then the other thing that happened with him is, uh, he generally picks up these, like, I understand why people like to homeschool their kids because your kid goes <laughs> out and comes back with some bullshit that they picked up from some kid that they like or whatever. And, um, and so this, so this time it's this weird, like, this weird laugh that he picked up and and finally i said to because I, I was annoyed today i was like who can you do it can you do the laugh no i can't even remember it right now but i think i'm probably blocking it out but the point is that i i, I had just lost it i was like dude who is that like that's not you you and i both know that that's not you who is that and he pretended for a second and then he goes oh it's johnny whoever johnny is right and i was like listen you're not johnny i'm not johnny's mom Johnny doesn't live here. There's a reason he doesn't live here because he's not mine. I didn't sign up for Johnny. I like Lincoln. It's really important for there to be a a Johnny and a Lincoln. And if you are being Johnny, then that means you're not being Lincoln. And what are we going to do without Lincoln? We like Lincoln. Please bring Lincoln back. Cause I can't fucking handle that laugh. Like, get out of here. Fucking get out of here. Oh my god, your kid's gonna get such a thrill and 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 a. It's going to be a trip for them to listen to the show 20 years from now yeah, and listen to you talk. I know. But and I, I, I at this point, I think that part of that conversation that I had with him was a little bit of maybe even me talking to myself. I find that I in liking to be social, like I can't even blame him for all this stuff. I'm super social. I like people. I like talking to people. But I, I recognize that I also after talking to someone for a uh, amount of time, I in an attempt to to like endear myself with them, I take on some of their like the way that they speak or their you know what I mean. Like I was telling you earlier, I don't. But think I think that's I would, something that happens with everyone. I think so, but some people do it a little bit more than others. And so after I've spent a weekend with certain people, I come back sounding like them, and then it takes a couple of days for me to let go of it. It's like when you say "Hey, hey, hey," it's right. like I can't remember the last time I was like "Hey," you know. It's just. <laughs> Yeah, so I in in that conversation that I was having with him, I was trying to check I was trying to check myself because I see it as a as a as a default of mine. Maybe default's not the the right word, but I see it as a thing that I I don't really like that I do, but I can't, I can't get help it uh because I'm so happy to be like super social with people and and um and build bridges i guess it's how i like build a 
build a connection with someone. And really, you shouldn't be doing that. Like, again, you should be on your side. They should be on their side. And you should build a connect and a connection based on who each of you are. Mm -hmm. Not because because like that's how friendships work uh, or else the friendship becomes one sided and. It doesn't like those kinds of things never really. But on the flip side of that, it also shows that someone can have an influence on you, right? That you look up to someone so much and that you enjoy someone so much that they can influence yourself or like you of who you are, how you speak, how you act, how you want to interact with this person. I know. And that's That's not a bad thing. Right. It could be a positive thing, but I don't I don't like it. Yeah. But when it's a kid, be like, "Ah." well, no, when it's a kid, it's annoying. Stop it. But also it. It it unbalances yeah. the relationship if it's two adults like it was or two whatever if they're the same. Uh, there's an there's an imbalance there that makes that person stronger and you the weaker person. And maybe it's the way that I'm framing it, but it feels like I give up part of myself to be more like you. Maybe you're and, predisposition to do so. I know, but I don't want to do that. So I'm trying to fix it. I'm trying to stop my kid from doing it because I don't like it. Well, stop it. <laughs> then stop it. <laughs> Oh, Lord, so, have mercy. You know, it's just been an interesting week for me kind of managing. And and the other thing I was thinking in the car here, and then we can move on, is the show is called The Breezy Moms, right? And I swear to God that I intend, my intention in every day is to be breezy, right? To, like, go with the flow as much as I can and not, like, flip off at the mouth at every at any turn like that's my intention but when i tell you it's not like all day reality every day like it's it's i'm working on this shit. like i'm working on it so i just have some moments where i'm like hey we can't you can't talk to me right now the the kids they were saying they were asking me to look at something mom watch this much and i literally said no thank you no thank you <laughs> like i just i don't want to i cannot no thank you <laughs> well listen one child at a time. That's one day you... at a time, one moment at a time. So all of that is to say I'm really happy to be here. I love my kids. I don't want to really get into an accident. Let's move on. <laughs> I feel like I'm going to get some text messages and some calls tonight. Like, hey, girl, you okay? You all right, girl? It's like, I yeah, am, I fine. am. She's going through therapy right now. I Relax. am. We got I this. Am. And, and still, I, will, I would appreciate those calls. So yeah. call anyway. <laughs> all right. She you ready? Talk. You ready? You want to go to your guest? Yeah, I want to go. Absolutely. Because, yeah, we're, I want to go. All right. Let's, let's do that for a transition, right? Let's do it. <laughs> let's do it. Let's do it. Like Nike. All right. So, um, okay. You ready? All right. So, uh, tonight. <laughs> <laughs> I've been ready, girl. Stay ready like the Hulk. So, I met our guest over a, a decade ago because she's cousins with my best friend, Kima. Since then, she's lived a couple different lives and is now momming it up in Atlanta with her husband and baby who just turned one. I'm so excited to have her on tonight to talk about starting a business with her husband and how she makes that work. I've admired her from afar for a long time and I'm thrilled to have her here tonight. Th- Koi, thank you so much for being on the show with us. Of course. Thank you for having me. Absolutely. So tell us a little bit about what you are. I, I just want to jump right in because, and I feel bad because we do, we, sometimes I call guests ahead of time so that we can uh, do the, you know, the like, Hey, I've, I haven't talked to you in so long blah, 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 and like cut that out of the show. But I also <laughs> really enjoy, I really enjoy that stuff. So you were saying that you, uh, you're in Atlanta and that your mom actually moved in with you guys to help you with the baby. Tell us a little bit about that. Yes, she did. She did. And, and basically you stole her from your sister. I did. So she, and my sister still does not like that, but she (laughs) used to go up a lot to Maryland and, um, she was really the babysitter Mm -hmm. for my sister. But when both of my nephews were, were like one, up until they were one, my mom stayed with them and she was kind of like their 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 daycare person mm-hmm. as well. And so I always knew, I, I guess my sister didn't realize this, but I always knew that, you know, when I had a kid, you know. My turn. Same for me. <laughs> um, so, yeah, she stole her house and she moved into our basement mm-hmm. and she literally Which I hear is pretty it. fly. What's that? Which I heard was pretty fly. It's like a nice, it's not like she's in a room down the, sh- down the hall from your bedroom. Right. She's not. She is literally two levels down. <laughs> That's great. Great. I saw so she has up. her own space. We have our own space. Yeah. It works, you know, um, and she watches him 
all day, wow. um, at least 12 hours. You know, when I wow. get up and go to work and then I go straight to the gym after work oh and then God. I we get them when we come home. Oh, my goodness. But it must be really nice to know that it's like your mom's family member. He's safe at home. Yes. Yeah, I know. Exactly. It's hard. And she's free. <laughs> so that helps. Let's not forget that part. That's like super <laughs> helpful. I mean, that. she costs you your basement level, but... <laughs> But I'm I'm good with that. <laughs> it's 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 a decent price to pay. I love it. Exactly. Um, yeah, okay, so she's super helpful. That's awesome. So your son is one, and you also recently got married, and you're a bonus a bonus mom. Can you tell I, us a I little am. bit about how motherhood has changed for you? Because it's like you're a new mom, and yes. tell What's us a little bit about mom? that. <laughs> yeah, so I have bonus kids. So my husband had four kids when before me, obviously from previous relationships, and um. And then we had our own, um, gosh, when was he born? September, <laughs> September of 2017. <laughs> it's a blur. It's a blur. It is a blur. It is a blur. So, I mean, I got into the step um, in 2016 when we got married. Uh -huh. uh, obviously I, I have knew the kids beforehand and they have been amazing. You know, there are some stories where you, you have blended families that are awkward Yep. You know, and it's just, it doesn't really work and mm -hmm. people just don't know how to really act towards each other. And the kids hate the mom, the mom hates the kids. And it's just a, like a bad <laughs> thing. Right. Yeah. But, um, I have been very blessed oh, for that great. not to be my situation that's whatsoever. Great. That's awesome. Yes. Oh, the kids are awesome. They have been amazing to me since day one. Mm -hmm. Um, I do give any of them live with you? To, they don't okay. No, They live with their mom. So they're here every other weekend. Okay. Um, and so we, I have a 20 year old, she just turned 20 yesterday. She's very excited about that. Wow. Um, a 20 year old, a 17 year old, and then we've got six year old twins. Wow. Yes. So we have a full house every other weekend. Oh my God. And, but it's great. You know, so they, they've always been great. They were in our wedding. Um, especially with the older ones, I don't, I tend not to try to discipline them because mm -hmm. I don't feel I need to, right? They're, they're grown. They're grown. Yeah. I mean, 20 years <laughs> old, I thought I knew everything. Right. I didn't. You know, I didn't. You know, but couldn't right, tell you that exactly. But you know, I'm I'm really just here to help. Right. The bonus. That's for, where the bonus thing comes from. Um, right. Mommy. That I I actually learned that from Jada Pinkett Smith. Yeah. <laughs> Not gonna lie. I was watching the Red Table, and um, <laughs> it's when you when you get stepkids, but you're like they have a mom. You know, yeah. exactly. and and you're. I I think that's probably where people go wrong is trying to become mom or be mom in some way. And it's like these kids have a mom, and they're pretty secure in their mom, even if you don't like her, even if they don't like her. <laughs> I told I was you that mouth was going to be juicy. No, that was God like <laughs> catching me because I was thinking something in my head, right? Mm -hmm. But like they have a mom, and uh, if you try and force yourself into that role, you're just going to have yeah. a problem. Yeah. For me, oh, bonus is just money, but I, I get it. <laughs> yeah, and they probably think that too. <laughs> yeah. So, yeah I, I've never had to play that role. We've got along great, even with the twins. I mean, they're, they're a lot younger. Mm -hmm. So um, so it, it's a different type of relationship, obviously, mm -hmm. with um, the two different sets. But it's great. I mean, twins. everything. I, six -year -old twins. I tell the girls all the time, just thank you for just accepting me and mm. And for us just to be able to have this type of relationship without drama. That's amazing. So it's good. It's and good. So, sorry, I was, part of that question was about um, how do you see yourself? So before you had your son and then you were a bonus mom, like that's of four kids. It's way different from your life before. Like how have you yes. started to vis like understand yourself and like look at yourself and think about yourself under this new lens? I don't even have time for that, but I'm just kidding. <laughs> um, so... <laughs> No, it has been, it's been different, right? I was clearly a kind of carefree, kind of did whatever I did, I could do. I worked for Delta, so we used to fly all over the place and we had just a bunch of free time to do a, a lot. What is free right? time? <laughs> what, and, then, and now it is like that. What is free time, mm -hmm. right? And so I've had to try to make it a point to mm -hmm. spend some time with me, mm -hmm. right? And, and I'm not great at it and mm -hmm. I just kind of started it because I needed it. Yep. Because there's a there's a time when you have to just right get in a car accident. You. Yes, you've <laughs> got to make that intentional. And yeah. it's to get in a car accident, right? You need time to get in a car accident right? and, be, just, and be by yourself for a yes, little bit. Yes, just for a minute. That time before the ambulance shows up, man, 
It's exactly. not. It's quiet. Exactly. <laughs> but it was quiet it was for quiet. a minute. And then, <laughs> never mind the ringing it's, in your head. Okay, sorry. Exactly. I, I'm clearly exactly. in a space. <laughs> but yeah, no, I, I, I love it because I love the fact that there is this, this human that relies on me for everything, loves me unconditionally. Mm-hmm. I can get mad at him one second and the next second he's trying to give me kisses because yeah. he just wants me to not be mad. Right. right? And right. he just loves me without any conditions. Yep. And so I love that part. I love being a mom. It is absolutely amazing. But I did have to step back for mm-hmm. a minute and just make sure that I'm not losing me mm-hmm. as well. Um, because I, at some points I did feel like that was happening with, you know, with my bonus kids, with the kid at home all the time. And then with the business and then yeah. not even to say this last, but you know, my husband yeah, matters too, right? Yeah, and man. He needs Come just as much attention as on them. Your shoulders, it's like, listen. Yes, <laughs> yes. And he brought it to my attention <clears throat> um, first because I didn't even realize that right. he's like, hello, hey, you know, hey. I'm over here too. Right, no and, kids without me. <laughs> that's right. That's right. And so, yeah, I just, you want more? <laughs> yeah, I yes. get it. I get it. Everybody <laughs> wants something, yep. right? And so you, but but. I need something too. Mm-hmm. And so I just have tried to make it a point in literally a week. It's mm-hmm. literally only been a week to where I have been like, Koi, <laughs> you got to make this happen. Yeah. And, yeah, uh, yeah. So, but it's been, it's been an experience. And so how have you <laughs> been doing that for you and for him? Like, what does it look like making time for you, for Koi? And what does it look like making time for your husband? Yeah. So for me, I typically try to do that time. And we were joking about this <laughs> earlier, but when everybody is asleep, yeah. it is like glory <laughs> to me. <laughs> mm-hmm. <laughs> because that is truly time where I can just sit and be quiet yeah. and just do whatever I want to do without anybody asking me for anything. Yeah. And I you know I do still have a full-time job, so I need to get up and, and go to work in the morning. But I'm like, no, I don't want to go to sleep. No, no. Yeah, yeah. It starts all There's over again in the minute, morning. Right, it starts right. all over again. Let me just <laughs> let me just here. enjoy this for a minute yep. and and take comfort in this moment. And yep. so I, I typically do it at night okay. with the lights off and kind of just sit in the bed like, oh, yeah. And so good. are you reading? Are you listening to something? Are you watching something? Because I find that when I think that I'm or I've just realized in the last couple of days, when I think that I'm giving my myself a, a, a minute to decompress, I'm actually on Facebook or I'm on social media somewhere. Yeah. And it doesn't it I think that I'm decompressing, but I don't I still feel wired and I didn't realize exactly. that that is not decompressing. So I've been right. trying to put it down, but I'm like so addicted to it. Yeah. So what are the ways that you like what are the actual things that you do? So what I had been doing before is for some reason I love solitaire. So I was playing solitaire oh, nice. a lot, mm-hmm. but I I did notice that that is also brain is wired and right. could you keeping your mind thinking. Mm-hmm. And, and so what I, started, what I started to do like this last two days, actually, <laughs> like the gym, right? So Real I've talk, got, okay? Real talk. We're not pretending that we... I, no. I, no this <laughs> I is, love I, it. This is a work in progress. Mm-hmm. I have not mastered it. I have not figured it out, but I just know that it needs to happen. Mm-hmm. And so we are working on things in order to try to make that happen, mm-hmm. right? And so um, I was having to teach some of the classes this morning, and so I had about 20... 20 minutes in between when I got home from the gym and when I needed to really start getting ready for work. Mm. And I knew it wasn't enough time to go to sleep, Mm -hmm. but I knew it was a good time to where I could kind of just once again, be quiet and be by myself. So I cut off all the lights and I just kind of laid in the chase with my eyes closed and just, Just I I wouldn't call it meditating because it's not meditating, but just relaxed Yeah, and just try to clear the mind and just be free. That's amazing. <laughs> Without thinking about anything, mm-hmm. nothing that has to be done for the rest of the day, nothing that that I had needed to do yesterday but didn't get done. Right, or right. Just quiet time. And did you find that you were able to to turn off your mind for just those like few minutes? I did. Okay, that's I absolutely great. Absolutely did. That's I, great. I, and it was great. And I told my husband on my way to work because I called him. And I was like, "That was amazing." <laughs> I've got to do that more often because yeah. it was it was great. So what I was going to what I was thinking is like it I think it takes practice. Like I'm I'm so happy that you felt that you felt that way for the 
like doing it for the first time because I went to a salt, like a salt mine Mm -hmm. and was, you know, they play the music and you're like laying in the chair and you're trying to like relax. And I had the hardest time turning off my mind. Like it was a 45 minute session. And probably for the first 30 minutes, I was just like, Candace, stop thinking, stop thinking, stop thinking about yesterday, stop thinking about my Like it was just, it was almost like a hyperdrive that yeah. I was thinking more because I wasn't talking. I wasn't looking at anybody. You know what I mean? And yeah. so it made me realize that meditation, it's not just something you're like, oh, I'm going to start meditating. Like you have to start and yeah. then you have to practice because you have to work. That's a muscle. It's a, it's a so brain true. muscle. You know what's funny? Because I intentionally, as I thought that would happen, and I'm not super religious or anything like that, but I said, let me just spend this time. And I literally... I talked to God and I know that's crazy because mm-hmm. people are like, Oh, she's one of those. I'm not, I, I'm really not a super religious person, mm-hmm. but I know that if I was just started having conversation, just started talking that that would kind of focus me yeah. a little bit. And I wouldn't be thinking about anything that I needed to do. I would just, I'm literally just talking, having a conversation with you, asking you to help me do this, help mm-hmm. me do that, help me better myself, help me get peace and just kind of, relax. Nice. And so I didn't really think of anything. I literally was just having a conversation. That's amazing. And then how do you up above? Right. <laughs> and then how do you make, so that's how you make time for you. How do you make time for your husband? So about that, um, <laughs> we're still working on it. But it's funny. One of his, the things that he really wanted is like when, you know, when we're going to bed or when he goes to bed, he goes to bed before me, he's like, just you know, put your phone down. Mm. No. And like, Let's just talk. Yeah. And so now when we get into bed, I literally, I'm trying, okay, put, remember. It's so hard. It is so hard, right? So, it is. We are so, so addicted like, to phones. Yes. And so I try to put it down and we, we talk about the business. We talk about the gym, how the gym went that day or how we have what happened at work. Mm-hmm. Um, but I just try to put my phone down and sometimes it's not even really just talking. Sometimes yeah. we're just kind of sitting there watching TV together. Right. Right. right? But it's just. The fact that my attention isn't on the phone, but right. we're on like him. at least touching, we're holding, and then we're connected. Yeah. I think that's more so what he's concerned mm-hmm. about. It's like, yeah. hello, I'm Hi. here. Yeah. Remember me. I know. <laughs> I just saw, um, um, it was probably a meme or something that was just talking about how important touch is, uh, how important yes. touch is to people, and especially in relationships, and not like sexual touch, but <laughs> I mean, obviously sexual touch is important, but yeah, just touch. And um, you take it for granted when you know your spouse is right, your partner is right there and you can always, and you're like, oh, don't touch me. But I remember right. when I moved to Connecticut, I came here first for about five or six months. And I, I remember being here and at some point I was watching, I was watching the um, election of like Barack Obama getting elected and I was in my apartment by myself and I didn't have cable or TV. So I was like legit, I had a antenna like, cocked to the side like trying to get I the, love it the one local <laughs> channel so that I could watch it and I just remember thinking I'm sitting here by myself I haven't hugged another person like actually like hug just a hug I haven't hugged a single other person in days like I haven't touched another person in days and I was feeling so lonely it was so yeah. lonely and yeah. I mean, he, James wasn't here. He was in another state, but to feel, I'm sure that there's a little bit of a feeling just like that. And then also being right next to the person must be that much worse. Right. That, that much worse. Yeah. Yeah. Agreed. It's, it's, it takes work. It definitely takes work. Now I'm, I'm torn because I want to talk about the business, but I also want to talk about let, let's let's start because we were, we're we're talking about your husband and we were talking about your your baby. So like I don't think there's a right time to have kids, but c- the world does, right? They're always like, oh, your your clock, your biological clock, yeah. blah blah. And yeah. I don't know exactly how old you are, but I do know that you're older than I am, and you just had your son, <laughs> right? So. <I> <laughs> Yes, you are correct. So having your son in, like having your first child in your late 30s, like how has that made a difference for you? How do you, like, how do you think about motherhood? Do you think about motherhood differently because you're a little bit older with a baby? Do you, do you remember how you thought about it before? Like, tell us a little bit about having a baby a little bit later than people assume you should. Yeah, well, that definitely was not my plan, (laughs) right? I, um, so I had him when I was 37. Okay. Right. But I 
that 37? Yes, I was 37. <laughs> math, um, boy. <laughs> doing math really quick in my head. Um, but that wasn't my plan. I definitely wanted to have kids much earlier. Mm-hmm. Um, as you mentioned before, I was married um, previous to my current husband. Mm-hmm. And we tried for kids. Mm-hmm. Um, and it just wasn't it wasn't our time. It wasn't right. It, it didn't happen for mm-hmm. us, right? And so, of course, I was devastated. Right. Because I wanted a kid so bad. But... You know, some uh, everything happens for, for a reason. A reason. Right? I was waiting I for am, you to say that. I was like, should I say it? <laughs> right. I, I, I'm, I'm Praise Jesus. Happy. It happened the way it happened. Yep. yep. Um, time flies 2020. And everything happens for a reason. And you just kind of have to be patient and just wait for your turn. Mm-hmm. And um, I'm happy that it happened this way because mm-hmm. I am, I'm older. Mm-hmm. I'm stable. Yeah. Right. And I've done a lot of things that I have wanted to do. And so I can truly throw my entire whole life into this kid and not feel like I am missing out Mm. or that I have, um, that I regret having him because I have done so much stuff that Mm -hmm. I can just kind of wipe off my chest. And I know there's so much more that I want to do, but it's not, it's not like I'm sacrificing. I don't feel like I'm sacrificing to really give him everything I've got. That's great. And you're in a position to give him a lot more than exactly. maybe you would have been able exactly. to. So it, it was perfect timing. Mm-hmm. Uh, the fact, I, I just, I'm just happy that it happened. Right. <laughs> and uh, I, I don't think I'll do it again. Really? <laughs> One I and done? Just that old. Oh yeah. I'm so done. Like this factory has been shut up, closed. <laughs> there's a, shut there's the a lock pad on the door. It's I not happening. It. Like, I love it. <laughs> it's a wrap. We are done with that. But, but it's, it's talk a little bit about that because people I don't mean to cut you off, but I did. I'm yeah. sorry. But <laughs> talk a little bit about that because people always don't accept when a woman says, oh, one and done or two. Like I'm at two and done. Like I don't want even though I think about it sometimes. It's mostly because I want to like come up with a new name. Right. It's not because I actually <laughs> want. You know what I mean? Like it's yeah. stupid. Yeah. 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 But when people. But people always come and second guess your decisions. How did you come to that decision and how do you reaffirm that? Because I'm sure people, even though you technically have four other kids, right? Like you, right? Right. Like, how do you, it's it's crazy. How do you handle when people, as I'm assuming that they do say, oh, when are you going to give him a sister? Don't you want a little girl? Like, how do you manage that every day? Every every day it happens, Mm -hmm. especially at my job. I think that's when it, they they do it the most. And I'm like, no, I'm not having another one. Mm-hmm. But the reason I don't want to have another one, I've thought about it, right? It would be awesome to have a little girl, mm-hmm. right? And to have, to let him have a sibling in the house all the time. Yeah. Because I didn't, I never wanted him to have, to be an only child. And he's not, which is great. Right. Um, but he is in the house by himself right. most of the time. So point. I know most of the time he does feel mm-hmm. like he probably is an only child because they're just not around as much. Mm-hmm. Um. But we do have four. We have five kids. <laughs> like there's five kids. Yep. And so to add a sixth kid is just, um, I don't think it's fair. Right. I, <laughs> it's I, not fair to I, anybody. It's not fair to anybody. It's a little it's reckless. Not, I'm just going to put it out there. It's just not fair to anybody. That doesn't, I don't know if we'd be able to really give all the amount of love and attention mm-hmm. that I think I want to give. Um, money, my pockets school, can't give exactly. the love and attention yep. that they would need, and it's it's a lot. I mean, I think six kids, yeah, is a lot, and um, <laughs> and I'm old, and I'm old, and I just don't think I want to have an a kid after forty. Yeah, yeah, and you're not ready now. You like you'd no. have to be ready now. <laughs> I'm definitely not ready now. It's, no, Mm-mm. that is too funny. <laughs> so I. I just don't think it, it. it's not. And my husband is very much against it as well. Right, right. Uh, and I totally understand that. Yeah. I get it. <laughs> Makes sense. So, no, I, no, no, we're done. I mean, unless a miracle happens and we win the lottery and we get like a ton of money. Yep. Um, then I could quit my job and really <laughs> give my all to them. Uh-huh. Until then, no, probably not. <laughs> I love it. I like, love it. Okay. So we're talking about money. Let's transition to the money side, which is the business side. So you and your husband recently in the last like year or so opened a business, uh, a franchise uh, gym, fitness gym. I don't know what to call it. So tell us a little bit about that because I'm mostly, I'm mostly interested in this like 
again, I, w- I was thinking about starting something new, right? Having a kid later in life, like mm-hmm. getting a divorce, opening a new business. Like that's a lot all <laughs> around the lot. same time. Yeah. How did you make the decision yeah. to open this business? Why did you go the franchise route? And how has it been going with working with your husband? Yeah. Because I'm, I'm afraid so- of that. You said what? I'm afraid to work with my husband. Well, yes. Well, um, <laughs> understandably so. Yeah, like he's great and he would probably be the, the best part of the business. But like, don't tell me what to do. <laughs> right? Yes. Like and so that we have definitely made it to where we have separate roles. Mm-hmm. Right. So there is really nothing that we do together. We are the CEO of our respective divisions within the business. That's great. That's great. <laughs> right. So it, it works. He is literally the head trainer and he does every workout. He um, is over all of our trainers and he handles that aspect of the gym. I am the finance person. So oh, okay. I, with the billing, I'm with like the back scenes, our, our, um, our system. Our rent, our payroll. Oh no, we lost her. <laughs> okay, wait, wait, wait. Flash billing, flash tax. Sorry, we lost you for a second. You're in the back, back office oh. with the payroll Yes. Payroll, <laughs> billing, um, hiring, uh, hiring. Yes. Anything related to money and, and, and the membership stuff. Mm-hmm. That is, uh, that's all me. Okay. And then I work with our admin. And so two very separate functions. So it's not like we're ever really telling each other what needs to, what you need to be doing or what he needs to be doing. So we have separated that completely, which is amazing, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. but it, it makes it work. Um, but I know I am happy to be in business with him to have him as a partner because I know his work ethic. Mm -hmm. I know my work ethic. I know he is in this for the long haul and wants it to Mm -hmm. to be just as successful as I do. Mm -hmm. So I know his commitment level will match mine and that I don't have to worry about whether or not the person is really into it the way that I am. Oh, that's great. Right. That's a good point. So that's why I'm happy that we did it together. And, and it's funny because, we had two dreams. I dreamed of having a kid. He dreamed of owning a gym. Okay. And so we did it Done together. It. Yeah. We were able to accomplish both of our dreams together, right? He helped me do my dream. Right. And so I helped him do his dream. Yeah, that's amazing. <laughs> Would I have wished that maybe we didn't do it so close together? <laughs> yes. Because <laughs> basically the gym is as old as your baby. Exactly. <laughs> Literally, we signed the lease, the franchise agreement in July, and we had the baby in September. Wow. That's li- yes. that's literal. Oh my literal. God. Literal wow. accomplishing our dreams at the exact same, same time. time. That's incredible. Yeah. Kudos to you guys. I can't even yeah. imagine. This, it was a lot, mm-hmm. and it was a lot for us to kind of work through and really understand how each of us handles pressure. Yeah. And to really know, okay, okay, don't take that personal. Yep. He just having he's he's having a moment. Uh huh. Or hit him the same way. Don't take that personal. She just crazy right now because she's <laughs> jacked up on hormones, right? And so there was just a lot that we kind of had to work through. Um, but I wouldn't have done it with anybody else. That's amazing because I know he he wants it just as much as I do. And so tell me a little bit about how you decided to go one the gym route and to the franchise the franchise route. Well, the gym route, we're both kind of workout people. Mm-hmm. We, we were, were athletes in high school and college, and um, we just like to be physical. That's how we met. We met at a gym. Okay. Um, so we, it's always kind of been in us. Uh-huh. And like I said, that was his dream. His dream was to own a gym. Mm-hmm. And so there was no question about about that. We were going to open up a business. It was going to be a gym. A gym. Okay. Um, and so- can you do a little sidebar to talk about when you were like a gym, uh, not a gym, like a bodybuilder? Holy shit. You were like a legit bodybuilder. I was a legit bodybuilder. Yes. No, I was like, I am a legit. No, I'm just kidding. Um- <laughs> <laughs> I just remember I was like seeing pictures of you and you were just like having fun. And then the next one, you're like all oiled up and greased up. <laughs> What is happening right now? Clear heels? I was like, oh my God, Koi is wearing clear heels. What is happening? Tell me more. I'm not in life right now. Yes, it's it's so funny. While is I was that how you guys met? Because my... he, I remember he trained, didn't he train you for the, and what is no. that called? What is so, that? You were a. A figure competitor. 
a figure competitor. Okay. Yeah, figure. So I, I, so I, when you think for the listeners, when you think bodybuilding, don't think um, like the he, the he man, right? Yeah. Where they're like literally jacked up on steroids, huge, yeah, um, huge build. That's not what I was in. So there's different levels of bodybuilding, especially in, in the. And out in the female, there's a bikini, there's figure, there's physique, there's like button, and then there's bodybuilding. Mm. And I was doing figure where, you know, you, you need muscles, you need to be cut, but you don't need, um, you're not huge. Yeah. You don't need steroids. And you don't, I mean, some people do, but you yeah. don't, okay. <laughs> you don't need that at all. Um, it might take a little bit longer, but you know, don't jack up your body. Um, <laughs> <laughs> right. Like you got to grow old at some point. It, right, exactly. <laughs> Right. Yeah. You need to stay healthy. And so, yeah. So I started that when I was going through my separation Yeah, uh, with my first marriage and it just being in the gym helped me focus on something else. Okay. Right. So it gave me that peace. It cleared my head. It was, it was somewhere where I could go to relieve some stress. Mm -hmm. And I started, um, because I wanted to do a competition within by Salas. It was a multi-level marketing company that I was involved in at the time, but you had to get votes in order to get on the stage to compete. Okay. And, um, so I did all this and was doing, getting, trying to get all these votes so I can get on the stage. Well, I didn't, I came in second. Okay. So I didn't, was, I wasn't able to get on the stage, but I felt like I've done all of this work. I really want to get on somebody's stage. <laughs> <laughs> so, so I, uh, I decided to start competing. I got a oh, trainer. Uh -huh. Um, and then I, I met, then I met my husband mm -hmm. and well, I, I, I had known him, but we, we weren't really dating at the time. And, but I decided to go ahead and, and do this competing thing. And he was a personal trainer, mm -hmm. but I got a trainer. So he was not my um, was main trainer, trainer okay. for body, for the competitions. Cause you're, you do need a certain, skill set for that. It's a whole different world in mm -hmm. that realm. Um, so I had a trainer that was in that world, but then of course my husband, well, he wasn't my husband at the time, but Mike make sure was you're, there make with sure you're me. Doing this he was thing and... my man friend at the right, time. Right. He, <laughs> <laughs> he would come with me to the gym and we'd have our workouts. He'd do them with me. He was there to support me. Um, if we wanted to do a little bit of extra, he would do some cardio with me. He was definitely there with me while I was going through that process mm -hmm. and helping me through that process. Um, and then we we did my first show. We won that show. Yeah, we I went remember. Pro that night. I was like, she just started yes. this and she wins. Like, it's yeah, amazing. It was awesome. When I tell you we were focused, we was focused. Yes. <laughs> we You're like, oh, you all life. don't want me on the stage? It's all right. I make my own stage. Listen. I'm going to show y'all that I should have been on your <laughs> I should have been on that stage. Place. It's go That's big right. or go home. That's amazing. That's Plain right. and simple. That's right. Exactly. And so we did um, we did my first pro show. Mm -hmm. We won that one. I remember all of which that. Which I was very shocked about. I did not. There was a beast of a woman. I just knew she was going to win. Uh -huh. I, I mean, I. But, you know, we always kind of down ourselves. Yep. Yeah, it's, but there was something the judges liked in me more. And I'm of glad course. they did. Uh, obviously. Okay. Obviously. I'm glad they did. Yep. Uh, but, yeah. So then we we changed federations. We went to a, a, a bigger federation. They um, they allow drugs in that federation. Oh. I was not going to be one that does the drugs. Mm -hmm. But um, so it makes it a little bit harder. So I was a little kind of nervous. But uh, the first two shows there we won. Mm -hmm. We went to um, the national stage and we did our first international show. You just and we, we got fit. Oh my god! And then we got married. So I took a break. Um, <laughs> <laughs> you had all got this winning, all, all this winning. <laughs> yeah, and then we got pregnant on the honeymoon. Oh my so god! So you just went. That was like a long. Winning That's a lot of winning. You. That's a lot of winning. She got. Yeah, all, it was great. I mean, we really had a good time. My coach still is like, "When are you ready?" When are you ready? When are you coming, when are we back? coming back? When are we do it again. <laughs> we still got goals, and I'm like, we do, and I and I definitely will uh -huh. do it again. We are definitely. I miss it. Mm. I do. I miss it a lot. Mm -hmm. um, but like I said, my focus is the, yeah, on the, the babies. Baby. Yeah, it's on the babies, and I spend so much time away from him already mm -hmm. that I just don't feel comfortable. Yeah, spending more time away from him mm -hmm. than I already do. That's that's real, and so. Now he's just started to like really sleep through the night, like, oh. really all the way through the night. It's awesome. Right. And so I, I've called my coach and I'm, I, I think we're going to start back up sometime soon because wow. I can go to the gym while he sleeps. Okay. All right. 
Okay. So we're we're we'll, we'll see in the in the very near future you might see Koi back on, on stage. On stage, I love it. I love it. Yeah. But it just speaks to like your ability to go through like you're like I see something I want something I'm going to do it right yes can we just take one little step back I just want to talk a little bit about how you made the decision like when you were going through your divorce because I feel like so many people that I, I see are going through a really tough time I'm in some mom groups and some of the people post and, which is crazy it's like it's on Facebook and like dude just walked out of the house and took all the money out of the bank and you're asking on Facebook what we should do like oh gosh uh, like it's a it's a lot and so there are a lot of people going through things and don't know when is the right time to give up or like it feels like giving up and they don't want to give up what yeah. would you say to someone who's in a situation that they know is not right but they're afraid like what helped you to make the, the final decision that like I need to take care of Koi and this is how I'm yep. going to take care of Koi. Oh, that's a, that's a loaded one. Right it's there. a Sorry. loaded question. <laughs> I mean, people come here for a reason. <laughs> that's, a, that's a good one. Um, I can't speak for anybody else. I yep. can't, for me, I did. I let it go on for a long time mm -hmm. and, and I allowed a lot of things to happen for a long period of time. Yep. That I shouldn't have. Okay. And, you know, you forgive and then you forgive and then you forgive. And there's at some point where you have to love yourself more mm. than you love the other person and allow the other person to treat you the way that they are. Mm -hmm. And there was, it was the last straw was just finding out again. So, so the reason I got divorced was, um, my husband was cheating. Mm. And so I, the, the final time I saw it. It was after we had been, like I said, we've been trying to have a kid. Mm. We had done the IUI twice. Mm. First time didn't work. The second time found out it didn't work. And two days later, I found out he was cheating mm. again. Yeah. And it was at that point where I said, I'm done. Yeah. I'm just not, I'm not going to do this anymore. And I'm not going to allow you to keep hurting me. So I literally um, told him to go. I, I will never forget it because it was the, I don't know if you heard about the snow Mageddon that happened down in Atlanta yes. like in, in 2014 so where we memes. had one inch of snow. You all don't know how to act with snow. Everything was shut down. Like <laughs> Y'all had 12 hour traffic jams yeah. for that shit. For an inch of yeah. snow. It was like overnight. Kids were stuck on school buses on the interstate. <laughs> it was that night. They That's had I mean. God was trying to tell me something. Emergency personnel <laughs> oh delivering yeah. diapers and emergency <laughs> supplies and insulin and Is stuff. Is that not insane? Because y'all have one plow machine in the whole city. <laughs> one. We had one. It was. It was so. It was so crazy. I cannot. It was the craziest time in Atlanta. Mm -hmm. And so I found out the night before that. Okay. And so that. The next day I told him, you know, I'm done. I'm going to divorce. This is not going to work. But I had said that before in the past and allowed yeah. him to come back and, right. you know, and just kind of accepted it and moved on. But I went to work that day and I was on the treadmill at work and the snow started coming down and people were like, get out, get out. <laughs> and so, <laughs> I was like, wait a minute, God, like, are you, is this my life you're talking about? Right. Or the streets we're talking about? Like, what is <laughs> <laughs> and so as I'm driving home and all of that mess, or at I least was like, trying to, not, yeah, this is not, this is not for me. And I literally called him up and I said, I'm on my way home. You need to be gone by the time I get there mm. and I don't want you back. And so he, I, he never came back. Mm. He moved in with his mom and, and we were done. Mm -hmm. And like he tried um, many, many times to, you know, get back together, but it was just not something that I was willing to do. Mm -hmm. And I'm proud Anymore. of you, yeah. you have to reach that, that, that limit. You have to reach that point where you are just done, done with the bullshit. And nobody and can I'm, tell can you. Yeah, me? absolutely. Absolutely. Okay. We have <laughs> you, the... you, you, just, you have to reach that point. And, and there's nothing that I can tell someone else. That point is different for everybody, mm -hmm. I think. And you just have to know what you are willing to tolerate. And at some point, you've got to just stop tolerating the crazy yeah. mm -hmm. and love yourself enough to know you deserve better. Right. That's right. And, and, and I had reached that point. 
I knew I, I knew I deserved that. This was not the life I was supposed to be having. Right. And, and it was time for a change. And maybe that's why you weren't having that baby. And so I have a clean break. That. Like, I mean, either that or he was arriving mm-hmm. empty. <laughs> I mean, well, <laughs> you're just wasting the good stuff Do you on know somebody who like... don't even matter. You know what I mean? Like, we can laugh now. <laughs> We can laugh now, but, but yeah, that's yeah, yeah, yeah. But it's that's hard. For real. It's, it's it's very real. I mean, think about it. I mean, if he was cheating on you, obviously he was doing stuff outside of your marriage, mm-hmm. and by the time he got to the house and you even considered trying the, less, the leftovers, he probably yeah. was on e. <laughs> Tommy, you're an idiot. Nothing left to give. You know, it's. <laughs> Girl, time yeah, to just, call the Uber. I, I just know, yeah, that's why we didn't. And, and not because he was on E, but God was like, this is not yeah. the relationship <laughs> where you need to have to be held to him. Yeah, because that, mm-hmm. that string is forever. That's that tie right. is forever. Like, I will not give you this kid until you wise the hell up and get the hell out of here. That is so and, real. And, and sometimes that we're is so. What happened. I'm, I'm not super religious. And so, like, God looks like whatever for whoever. But right. like sometimes we're so focused on what we think we want and we get so mad when it's not coming, it's not coming yes. and you just like dig your heels and you're like, but this is what I want. And yep. it's God or whoever your God is or whoever your thing is. It's just like, dude, I said, no, I said, right. no, because when, I know when better you gonna listen? You. We don't listen. <laughs> and when you going to listen to me? When... <laughs> <laughs> it's I'm like, you got time. Just... I got time for you to figure this out. I got, I'll wait. Right. Don't worry. I'll wait. Right. You're just wasting your time. Right. I'm trying to help you get what you want, but mm-hmm. you are sitting here wasting your time on something I'm telling you to get out of. Yeah, that's incredible. That's incredible. Mm-hmm. Well, good for you. I'm so proud of you. I'm so happy for you. And you've Thank totally you. been like thriving ever since. So like there is there is life after. And I think we're so worried. Women, moms, like you're a mom now, but like women were so worried about failing at whatever yes. the thing is. Oh and so yeah. like failing at a, especially a relationship that is presented to women as the end all be all. Like you got to get married, you got to have kids, you got to make this work. And if you don't, then you're a failure. Right. And it does not have to be like that. It doesn't have to. And it's okay. It's okay to like fail at something and it's a teaching lesson for you so you can win at the next thing. Right. If you don't preach right now, you better (laughs) say it. Yes. (laughs) <laughs> and you're winning. You're totally winning. Um, okay, so I want to focus uh, as we like wrap up. I want to focus a little bit on the entrepreneur entrepreneur side of this. Now, to be fair, you are working full time uh, yeah. somewhere else. So, like your nine to five is is uh, funding your five to nine. I just 100%. saw that. I just saw that somewhere today, <laughs> and I was like, yes, I totally, I totally understand that. Yeah. <clears throat> But tell me a little bit about like what you find to be the best part of being an entrepreneur and uh, if you always knew you wanted to start a a business and why you like what you're looking forward to next. Yeah, I I have always known I want to start a business. It's it's funny. I have been in all type of multi-level marketing schemes Mm. just because I love love schemes. Like, let's be real. yourself. (laughs) What was that? (laughs) So you called it a scheme. I mean, let's be real (laughs) until you find the right thing. I mean, right. I don't know what to say. I don't know. But yes, I've been involved in multiple. Yeah. um, Because I do love the aspect of having my own business, having my own money and doing kind of what I want to do. Right. Right. Um, And I can't handle talking to people. I have always known that, that I wanted to do that. Um, And eventually we will leave our full-time jobs, but we had to have a job in order to fund the gym. Mm -hmm. And I will say now the gym is paying its own bills. So I don't have to use, we don't have to use any of our own money for that anymore. Um, but it's not at a point where it could fund the gym's bills and Amen. our personal bills. Right, right. We're not there yet. Let's be but real. We, we are hoping to get there very soon. I mean, speak um, it into existence. It will. Yeah. It will. Exactly. Yes. But yeah, just having your own time, creating your own schedule, mm-hmm. not having to answer to anybody else. Mm-hmm. And, and knowing that when you go to work, you are directly impacting you and your family, like mm-hmm. what you do there will directly affect you and your family for the oh, better. That's real. Whereas I know when I go to work, I am directly benefiting somebody, somebody else's, else's family. family. Right? <laughs> <laughs> and I am getting a paycheck and I love my paycheck. Right. And I'm not complaining about that yep. at all. But I know that I'm not really doing, I'm not fulfilled. I'll yeah. say that. Cause at the gym, I know I am helping somebody mm. 
Mm. For real, for real. For like real, there's a lot real. of people that we help that lose weight, just feel better about themselves. And there's like a direct correlation to their happiness. Yeah. And and my job with spreadsheets, no, don't no, nobody cares about <laughs> spreadsheets. I'm not helping. I'm not I am not fulfilling anybody's dreams or anything with that spreadsheet. Yep. You um, ain't saying but at the that gym, ain't true. we are directly impacting people's lives. Yeah. And it's it's an awesome feeling. That's amazing. I love it. And that that thing about directly impacting your own family, right? Um, oh, I can't remember what his name is, but the guy who owns Ali Alibaba. Do you know Alibaba? It's like one of those websites where you go and buy like thirty nine um, little chachi toys, or like yes, you know, like that little yes. place. That isn't that I, like the. I shouldn't like call the, it the little place because it's a big ass. Place. But isn't that like the Asian <laughs> version of Amazon? Yes. Okay. Yes. So that place, the guy who runs that, the CEO of that something, something Ma is his name. He said that we don't, we don't realize that, um, or we are, we're taught, we grow up learning, thinking you go to school and go get a job, right? You go get a job, you go get a job because you need a paycheck to like do whatever. And we're not taught to like learn what we can learn so that we can start a business because a business actually like gives you something you know what i mean like you get a paycheck and then they take away the paycheck and then you're done you start a business you really have something that's your own and the money is always coming to you you know what i mean like he said more and it was more eloquent than that that's why he's a billionaire and i'm not (laughs) but but the thing that i took away from that is like i catch myself telling lincoln oh you're gonna go to college like we gotta we all gotta go to college here and the (laughs) so you can get a job so you can have a house you know what I mean like you put it in that order and and I feel like I grew up thinking that having a business like owning my own business was the risky thing but the more secure thing is to get a good job that has good benefits I mean Mm -hmm. like 50 years ago a pension was the thing we don't have pensions anymore but like you want to get a job that has been benefits and then you'll be set and it's like, no, you really aren't. People get fired yeah, all the time. They can fire you at any given minute. Any minute. Right. That's you right. gotta give them two weeks, but they can fire you right now. And they can yeah. do that. They can pretty much do that for whatever reason they want. Yep. In exactly. your own business, you fire yourself right. based on what you fail to do for yourself. Right. Exactly. And so that is a different it, it drives you in a different way, right? Yep. Because it does. what you do directly impacts you. It doesn't impact yep. anybody else, right? But you and your family. And so therefore you are more inclined and you're more driven to make sure that you are successful at it. Mm-hmm. Yes, mm-hmm. yes, sir. So yes, as exactly because if I will go to work and work so hard for somebody else, yeah. why would I not be doing the same thing for you? For my family. You for you. So what is what is one piece of advice that you would give someone who is um, you know, thinking about starting a business or in in the midst of I still feel like I'm just starting even though I'm a year in, right? Like there are different stages and a year is still, I feel that way because I feel like a year is not really that much time. Yes. But what, what, what would your advice be to someone who is either thinking about getting into um, having their own business and being an entrepreneur or like early in the stages, whatever that looks like for them? Um, Make sure you're ready. Right. Make sure you're really ready for all that it entails Mm -hmm. and make sure you have your finances set up front and that you don't have to try to add more finances after you've already started. Have your funds, have your budget set up front. That is where we really um, screwed up. We've learned so much in this process, but I think we were so green at the beginning. We made so many bad decisions and bad that that cost us Mm -hmm. a lot of money. And um, so we had to do build out. Our contractor was horrible. So Mm -hmm. really vetting out who you're going to get to do construction. And then, you know, you get (sighs) so excited about what you want it to look like, what you want it to be, that you sometimes you can go over the top on things that you don't really need. Right. Right. So there was a lot of money wasted on things that we don't even use today. Mm, And we could go back and and, monitors everywhere. (laughs) Yes. Everybody needs their own monitor. I mean, seriously, so much money. We need chargers on every treadmill. Yes. It's like, we don't need that. We just don't need it. We wasted so much money. And like, we did not have a set budget, Mm. right? We had an idea. Okay. We're going to spend this amount of money, but I never said like, if we, if we're getting close to that, stop. 
Oh, right. Okay. Slow some things down. I was always like, we have so All much money, money we can use. We could just get some more, you know, and, and that was yeah. not smart. That was yeah. not smart. But know your budget. Stick to your budget. So make a budget. And make a budget. How about that? How much That's money first. you have in the bank? <laughs> right. Exactly. Yes. And yeah. Just, yeah, really. That's the first thing. Really know your budget mm-hmm. and stick to it. Mm. You don't even if that means everything. slowing down. Yeah. Exactly. Or changing whatever the like thing is that you. Because for me, that's like all the fancy um, natural wood, all the fancy yeah. like. Um, you need that. Yeah, all the fancy Montessori really things or all the fancy, uh, I'm trying to think of what the other thing, it's Montessori and the other one is the, I can't even think of it right now because I don't do it. Mahogany. But, <laughs> no, 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 Montessori is a, is a like development, is a like uh, school of thought kind of for for early education i thought she was talking wood no 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 (laughs) but they come anytime you get it's it's anytime you get into a specific niche right like oh in my case for child care it's oh i'm gonna be montessori inspired or i'm gonna be reggio inspired or i'm gonna you know like any of that kind of thing they know that they have a a captivated audience and so like a toy in that in that place is like $75. Yeah. Right? right. And so I'm yeah. imagining for you, the, in the gym space, it's like, you want to have the most up to date, most high tech yes. things right. with the chargers and the people talking yeah. and the like intercoms, like whatever, yeah. <laughs> whatever. And it was crazy because the franchise is like, don't get showers. You do not need showers or locker rooms. It's only 30 minute workout. They're in and out. Do oh. not put showers in your studios. And we were like, we're we getting need. showers. And not only are we getting one of them, we're going to get two. One oh for men God. and one for women. And and it was a complete waste of money. Oh. And because we did it. And nobody got uses two them? two locker rooms. They each have showers. And we've had one person to use them in the year and three months that wow. we have been open. <laughs> so, See, I mean, it's a franchise for a reason. They know what. <laughs> right? Why do we know more? Like, why do you think you know more <laughs> than the franchise owner? Like. <laughs> Stick to the guidance that you get. Stick right. to the advice that people give you because if they've been doing it, they probably know a little something. Yeah. And just because it might look nice or you can say that you have it, the chance of people actually using it might be slim. Slim. Okay. And then the last thing is how do you decide between a franchise and opening your own gym, like the Koi, the Koi gym? Like, how do you? And we probably mm-hmm. will go with the the Koi and Mike gym after our five year uh, agreement is up mm-hmm. for us. We wanted to do a franchise up front because they, they help with a lot, right? Mm-hmm. They help with all of your advertising. They help with your website. They help with um, marketing. They, they did a lot. They gave you, they give you the design for, um, for your gym. So you don't have to even think about that. They give you all the material you need, waivers, contracts, just mm-hmm. everything you would need to actually start up and open a business. You don't have to worry about that aspect at all Mm. that's already done for you um so we we knew we wanted to do a franchise we didn't want to have to worry about that type of stuff as well as everything else but Mm -hmm. now that we now that we have we have it right now after this experience yes we're we're confined now with the franchise we can't really do a lot of things that we want to do Mm. so we probably won't renew um after the five years and we'll just kind of do our own thing nice well, Koi, we got some knowledge in our belts. Now. I love it. Now we I know love... everything, right? <laughs> now you know everything after before, a so. year. <laughs> right. We're all knowing. We can do it on our own. <laughs> I love it. Well, Koi, thank you so much for sharing so much of your personal story. I feel like a lot of those things in there that you were talking about, there are people going through all sorts of things. And uh, I think it could be super helpful somebody to somebody listening. So thank you so much for being so open and honest and willing to share with us and keep doing what you're doing. I'm super proud of you. I'm so happy to be watching you from, you don't, you may or may not know that I'm over here like stalking you a little bit, but I'm <laughs> stalker. But like, I love to see people winning and like I learn so much from other people winning. So the more winning, the more women, the more black women, like it's a thing. So um, thank you. Thank you for doing what you're doing and congratulations. Absolutely. I appreciate you. Success. Thank you both so much. All right. So you're welcome back here anytime, anytime All when right. your next thing is coming up, uh, when you open the coin mic gym, let us know. Yeah. 
I will most definitely do that. All right. So I'm going to let you get to your, your, uh, your Zen moment. If you can take some quiet time before you go get the little one yeah. <laughs> and tell on Sylvia, Sylvia that I said, hello. I will do that. Thank you guys. Have a great night. All right. Have a good night. Bye. Well, and that was Koi. She, know, um, she she's, she is incredible. And it was just listening to her story, right? Cause a lot of, a lot of times success comes with, um, you know, in order to know success, you've got to know the struggle mm. and you got to know that you came from something where you don't want to go back there. Mm-hmm. And I think that her story regarding, you know, her previous relationship and how she was trying to uh, be a parent, just, you know, hang in there, as she said, mm-hmm. and blessings just fall, you yeah. know, now instead of having one baby, she's got five. five. <laughs> so, oh, you yeah. want kids? I'm going to give you kids. Be careful what you wish for. That's <laughs> all I can say. But, um, so, uh, I think we, we did good time today. I think we did. And so, I think we have uh, the... Mom So Hard, which I don't have one. But I did want to wrap up with something else that's been going on the last week. So we'll do that instead of the Mom So Hard tip because I don't really have one this week. Uh, so something that's been interesting that... Well, anyway, that has happened in the last week that I just wanted to talk about a little bit because it's been on my mind. Um, so I watched this show on YouTube called Women of Impact. Have mm-hmm. you ever seen or heard of it? No. There's another show called uh, Impact Theory, and it's a husband and wife team. And so Women of Impact is the wife has her own show now. And <clears throat> it's a great show. It's Women of Impact. So it's like lots of cool women that come on and talk about all kinds of things that they talk about. And I was watching it a couple of weeks ago and they, um, the episode that I was watching was Patrice watch Washington, who's the money maven, um, this really cool financial uh, person. And I, I feel like I mentioned it at some point over the last couple of weeks. Anyway, I made this comment about how, how, um, there was a moment where I was going to go back and see, cause I had missed some episodes and I was sort of scrolling through and I was like, Oh, they only interview white people here. Like, this is weird. This is the first person of cult, like the first black woman that I've seen. And then I scrolled down and there's like one Asian lady and I think maybe one Latina lady, but like I was scrolling and I was like, where, I mean, the show is called women of impact. It's not yeah. called like white women of impact. Like where are all the other women? Do you think that that was done <clears throat> intentional? No, I don't think it was done intentionally. So what I, what I, I said in the, the comments was like, Hey, I was just about to give up on the show. And then this awesome woman, the money maven Patrice was on and I was like, Oh, let me see what's going on with her. But like, you didn't have any people like you, your show was all white people before, right? Like the one Asian person or the one like Latina person that I had to double check and make sure because like maybe her name sounded Latino. Um, Like it's a show, it's supposed, it sounds like it's supposed to be a show for all women, but you're not, you're not interviewing all women. You're not showcasing all women. And so I was just about to like stop watching the show and then here comes Patrice and I, and it, it stopped me from giving up on the show. But the point is that representation matters. And if you're intending to speak to all of us, then you should speak to all of us with all of us. Right. And it was, I don't want to say it was a throwaway comment, but it was a small thing that I did on my phone and I wasn't even really thinking about it. And over the last couple of weeks, it, I've had this like experience for the first time where like people from the internet have been coming for me in a way that I've never ever experienced before because I said I almost stopped watching the show because you don't interview any women of color I didn't say I did stop watching the show but it was like I almost people said I had an inferiority complex and black people are always looking for like something to complain about and um like, why don't you go make your own shows? Like, first of all, I did. Um, uh, yeah. And, um, like, you're coming from a place of lack. And if you don't, like, like, why can't you just get the message and don't worry about the messenger and blah, blah, blah. And it was just my fir- my very first experience, like, being on the, the worldwide internet and having, like, random people. I feel like I have my little community here. I talk to you every week. We've been we've had a good time. It's been amazing. But this was the really the first time where I was just like, really? You're going to call me? Like, you're going to say I have an inferiority complex? You're going to say that I have, like, that I'm just looking for something to complain about because I made a legit comment about a show that's supposed to be for all women? And it just reminded me that 
um, that if we're not intentional about about addressing all of the people, right? Like about it, if we're not intentional, it's really easy to like mess up. And what was really nice and and helped me get through like the barrage of, I mean, it wasn't terrible. Like I didn't get death threats, right? Because some people get that. I did. But like, right. So some people get that. It I wasn't, ruined Endgame for people and oh my God, forget it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That was pretty bad. Mm-hmm. But so I didn't get that. But I did, <laughs> I did feel a little bit of some way. And um, and then the host of the show responded to me and was like, hey, s- someone early on, somebody brought that up and we've been trying like we've been trying to address it. And and I hear you. I hear you. And what was hilarious then to me is that after she said that people were still kind of coming for me. And I'm just like, dude, the host recognizes something. This is not a out of left feel. I'm, I wasn't being nasty. I wasn't being rude. I was just like saying something real like legit and she agreed with me and still you're coming over here telling me some foolishness like what is wrong with you well it's called trump's america right so it's trump's america but the part that made me the the most upset was when there were women of color who said things to me like um well, why can't you just get the message? You get the message from anywhere. I was like, an Asian woman said that to me. A Middle Eastern woman said to me, like, I don't understand why in America people think like this is such a big deal. It's not like where I'm from. We don't have racism. And I was just like, first of all, the Middle East doesn't have racism. Like, what the fuck is wrong with you? <laughs> and I just had this like real, it's one thing when racist, pe- like clearly racist people, but when people of color don't recognize the 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 like, impact the impact that not seeing yourself represented has. or the impact of racism on them right they think it's just a thing right like there's there's absolutely racism in the middle east there's racism in in india there's racism in asia in china like there race there's racism everywhere mm-hmm. and um but i think that often in other places outside of America, the things come, they're more about religion. They're mm-hmm. more about religion or ethnicity, but they're not not about race. You know what I mean? Like brown people have a hard time. Dark brown people have a hard time everywhere, mm-hmm. even in places that belong to them. Like apartheid, yeah, but this, but this, apartheid was in South Africa. South yeah. Africa belonged to brown people and they still had a hard time. Right. Yeah. Well, the thing is, though, in, in America, it was built. <laughs> Yes. On slavery, right? Yes. And most so of America these nations, is unique. It's very unique in the <laughs> in sense that. that, you know, um, most of our entire nation was built on this on, on the back of slaves. Right. And it's horrible. It's a horrible thing to to have to admit. Mm-hmm. But it, it is But it's a, real. It's a hard truth and we have to swallow that pill whether we want to or not. This woman and so, this woman said to me, I just think that my ancestors, if they could talk to me now, would say, like, why are you focusing on all these like things that don't even matter? People are humans, human humans, humans, human. We have the same blood. And I was like, first of all, your ancestor would be like, Hey, why would why would you let them free? Right. Like that's exactly what your ancestors would say. What you think they would say is because you're pretending, you know, and you'd like to think it's like legit. People think, oh, I'm woke now. So like if I were back in the day, I would have what, like given your slaves water to drink or like let them go to sleep or given them something soft to sleep. But you would still have had slaves like you would not have not had slaves. It was the thing that people <laughs> like it did was the back thing, then. Right? You know, it's like if you had a plantation, you had work that needed to get mm-hmm. done and your white ass wasn't going to do it. <laughs> Plain and simple. Just, and so, you yeah. know, it's So it's it's I know that it's hard. I know that it's hard to know that like to to accept, right? And and I I'm I'm finding this in some other places too. It's like people get so this this white lady was so mad because someone told her she had white privilege and she was so caught up and like but she's had a hard life that she couldn't accept that she couldn't accept it. It's Even like, your hardest life your is still hardest life. Your hardest life is still better than my best life. Your best. Holy shit. Like and that sucks for me to accept, but dude, if I have to accept it, you have to accept it. So anyway, just in this last week that it's i i have been trying to play like figure out for myself what it is 
what it is that I, how I feel about being in that situation. Again, I didn't get all the way dragged. I, mean, I don't, I don't feel scared or anything, but like having this experience of having like a thousand people <laughs> attack me for some small thing that I said, um, made me, made me even more committed to how I feel and, um, and to wanting to use my voice because like a lot of people say, oh, we just have to let racism die out. And it's like, actually, it doesn't some like out. racist ass 13 year olds. And they just learned that shit in the 2000s, yeah. like literally in the 2000s. So we can't just let things die out. We can't just we can't just stay quiet because like we're afraid. We do need white people who like realize, recognize and are allies to speak up. Like, we don't need you to do things for us, but we need you to be here next to us because sometimes us. people don't listen to us. We could be saying the same shit, but if you say it, like, the defense, like, I really think that my comment, because they could see my picture on YouTube, my they were just like, Why, who are you? Who are you? Why would you say, like, how dare you? This lady's a billionaire. How are you coming for this lady? I don't care who you are. Like, you're a billionaire, but you're just starting a show and you need to know that... Like, I see you and I see what you're doing and everybody else sees you and sees mm -hmm. what you're doing. And so you can't speak out of one side of your mouth and then actually do stuff out of the other side. Like, you got to be legit or or like admit that you're not. <laughs> you know what I mean? And so we need people um, to speak with us like out. Like, like, that's what being an ally is about. And like, I just have to continue being like unapologetic in how I feel and, and the things that I say like um the the last thing that happened the last comment that came up recently is like I said in this thing like people who look like me I said that I didn't see people who look like me I didn't say I don't see black women I said I don't see people who look like me and the response was from people was oh like black or black American like my family's from Central America my family's Caribbean I am African American, like I'm from New York, I'm from America, but my whole family is not from here. They're black, but they're also from Central America. There are black people in the Middle East. There are black people in China. There are black people everywhere. And so I'm speaking of I'm speaking about people who look like me. And the fact that you assume that we don't have the kind of breadth of diversity that you would give yourself is just disgusting and says more about you than me. And so, like, get away from me. <laughs> I right? like back up off me. So I had a moment this week where I was I was reminded that um, the 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 fight and I hate to call it the fight, but like the fight's not over. We still have to we have to like black women, particularly, we have to fight to be seen, fight to be heard, fight to like not be minimized or quieted or shamed or like gaslighted. Do you know what gaslight means? Mm hmm. So for people who don't know, like gaslight means that I said something and you as a like white person or a person who's different from me, try and turn my words around so that I feel crazy or like I, I um, second guess like my actual feelings or my actual like um, idea about whatever. It's also a very common right? term for people in relationships. I mean, mm -hmm. not to get away from the subject, yeah, but yeah. husbands who are abusive <laughs> towards their their wives right. or their girlfriends gaslight them. got gaslight them all the time. Yeah, you know, yeah. like, I beat you up. Yeah, but you know, you deserved it because you did you this. You left and, the cabinet open. But I love you. <laughs> but I love you. No, but anyway, not to get away from the yeah, subject, yeah, but yeah. It, it's, it happens a lot. Yes, it happens a lot. And it's important that we can continue to speak up both like. We've had we've had people on the show. We've been talking about like black women and healthcare and the um and birth, like the mortality rate around birth mm -hmm. and how like shitty some of our experiences are with um in the hospital in in medical situations and healthcare situations. Like we just have to continue to to speak up yeah. and and for me, I was just thinking like it doesn't like I always think about when I'm inviting people on the show. I think about what I want to talk about and I think about all the people I know and and never think, oh, well, I want to talk to her, but she's not black and this is a black show. Like, I haven't decided that this is a black show, but it basically is because I'm black. You know what I mean? And 
but I do the work to make sure that I'm getting all of the voices, right? So there've been plenty of people of all different backgrounds on the show, even though I'm pretty comfortable and confident in saying that the, the, the point of view of the show, because of who I am, is of a black woman. That doesn't mean that I can't have other women or even, you know, no, we had Julian or, on the show, right? We had other people on the you show. You have a gay man that sits gay, next to you a every gay day. Latino. <laughs> and so, you know, it's, um, I have to say that, you know, your show by far is one of the most diverse that I, I, I see on a, on a daily basis. I listen to a lot of podcasts and we mm-hmm. have our own show. Uh, you know, I sit with two white boys every day, mm-hmm. every, every Monday to do a show and sort of kind of have to navigate the, the complexities of being a brown person mm-hmm. that's really not brown. But I am, right. and then sitting between two white boys and sort of kind of, right. you know, we're in the ring, right. and we're going back and forth, <laughs> because sometimes they don't understand. Right, because you share one commonality, but not all. Exactly. And that's fine, but it means that you're not the same, right? Yeah. And that you have differing, like you come with different information, you come with different experiences, and that makes your conversation the richer. Mm-hmm. And that's basically what I was trying to tell the show women of impact and also say like if you don't focus on this but i I mean i think like why why is it that i feel weird if i don't include lots of different voices and you and someone has to tell you you should include lots of voices you know what i mean and that's what privilege is that's what like that's what we're trying to address that you you have to be super intentional because otherwise you forget and it's easy for you to get because nobody checks you on that shit. And you'll think you're doing nothing but if wrong. I only, but if I had a show that was called like Breezy Black Moms and I only had black women and I like wouldn't include anybody else, like it would, it would be, re- I mean, it would probably still be awesome, but people would talk shit about it. It's like, oh, Candace, why don't you, why don't you, blah, blah, blah. you know what I mean? Like it, it wouldn't be okay. And also I, it wouldn't be real to who I am and, and what my village looks like because that's not what my village looks like. So, Anyway, that was just like weighing, weighing on my mind and important for me to say out loud for me and also for the people who listen to the show, especially if I think especially if you feel like liberal or woke or whatever the thing is that you feel, maybe even because you listen to the show, right? Because you listen to shows that that are that are run by black people or you like shows that have black leads or whatever, like it's easy to to feel like you are doing like oh that's not me that like i like i like candace's show so obviously like that's not me you still have to remember that you have to do the work because yeah. even when you're not thinking about it like unconscious bias is a real yeah. is real it's unconscious for me it's not it doesn't have the same effect cuz like i'm not like my unconscious bias doesn't cost someone their life yeah, or it's it's, it's like, like <laughs> it's like saying okay but i, I went to i went to watch you know, I I went and seen Black Panther because it's a superhero movie and didn't acknowledge the fact that it was an almost an entirely black cast movie. Right. There's one white dude in the movie. So, you know, <laughs> it's that's exactly what it's like. So, right. you know, if you say, oh, yeah, I went to see the superhero movie Black Panther. Right. And you completely ignore the fact that the entire cast was black. Was black. Yeah. So, so anyway, that's on where, that note. Yes. That's where I was this week. And um so I guess that's my my tip for the week. It's not a mom tip. It's just like a person tip. Uh, do the work and make sure that you're like, we don't have time for foolishness right now. We don't have time for you to like be colorblind. We don't have time for you to see humans and red blood and whatever the hell else people are <laughs> think that it's okay to say. Uh, we need you to see us. We need you to recognize us. We need to, you to recognize you and we need you to do something about it. Right. We don't need you to fix anything for us. We just need you to like to be there. I, I can't I don't even know what I'm 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 confused right now because I'm stressed out. But um, that was just weighing on me and I wanted to make sure to say it, even if it's just so that I can hear it back in a couple like a couple days when I listen back to the show. So thank you so much for being here. Shout out to Koi for being with us tonight. Absolutely. Shout out to everybody on Facebook live who was watching us. Sometimes I forgot the camera was on and I apologize. <laughs> I'm going to get better every week. So thank you for tuning in and we'll see you next time. Bye. This show is produced by Tom Ortiz at digital stream radio. It's available for download on Podbean. Follow us at Facebook at breezy moms podcast or email us at breezy moms podcast at gmail.com. Until next time, don't stress, just breathe.